What a setting. The splendour that is Edinburgh. Scotland's world-famous capital city is host to Saturday Fight Night for the first time ever tonight. This place is laden with history, and boxing has played its part in the tradition here. But tonight, the city is host to its biggest fight in years. <laughs> It's an old cliche, but blink and you will miss this. Who will land first? I don't see any way this can be anything but a thriller. So how will the genteel, stately city take all the excitement? Amid all the sights in this tourist paradise, you do have to go looking for boxing's legacy. But at the old Waverley Market, Philadelphia Jack O'Brien made his debut in Britain. In Leith at the El Dorado Club, world flyweight champion Benny Lynch cut his teeth. And at the Industrial Hall in 1924, 20,000 fans roared local hero Tommy Milligan to victory against the great Ted Kid Lewis. In more modern times, of course, here at the Meadowbank Sports Complex, they've hailed many Scottish success stories. And they were knocked over in the rush when the first professional bill in this city in five years was announced. It is a total sellout, and there are plenty of disappointed fans in Edinburgh this weekend. You get the idea that the whole Scottish nation is waking up to Arthur in a big way. Their new hero, Arthur, makes his first professional appearance in his home city tonight, defending his British super featherweight title against Gomez, the former champion who never lost that title in the ring. This is going to be something special, we know that already. Arthur's biggest test so far for sure. Gomez states it will be memorable whether it goes one round or 12 and after all the recent bitter controversy in boxing maybe this will be the remedy for us all. Jim and Barry would not have missed this one for anything I know. And Jim from you first please. The excitement is incredible this weekend about Alex Arthur here in Edinburgh. Are they all getting carried away? No, not really. I mean, Edinburgh was a big fight city many years ago, but it's been dormant for so long. Even the great Ken Buchanan didn't box here as a pro. So it's taken someone special to, to rekindle it, and Arthur has done that. This is a big night for Edinburgh and a massive night for Alex Arthur. Barry, let, lest we get carried away by all this Arthur euphoria, you know he is without his new trainer, Freddie Roach, tonight. And do you believe that this is in the ring going to be his hardest night? I don't think so. I think this could be. His, did you ask me? Is this going to be his toughest? His hardest night? night in the ring. Yeah, I, I, de I definitely think this would be his toughest test, unquestionably. This guy's dangerous. He can bang with that left hook. He's fired up for this fight. He feels everybody's writing him off. This is definitely going to be the best fight, and I think it'll be a great night of boxing. Michael Gomez would admit he has been in the wilderness a little bit, but the evidence of the weigh-in was that he has prepared possibly under his new trainer, Billy Graham, on our left there, the best that he has ever prepared. Yeah. And it was first time on the button 9-4. Yeah. Nine stone, four pounds, exactly. But that's where the consternation started, and unexpectedly, it was the champion who appeared to have the problems. Slightly over first time, looking slightly sheepish. Gomez might have thought there was going to be some late problem. A second attempt failed, and at the third time of asking, eventually, Another sheepish it's smile. Quite embarrassing, you know. Uh, I was actually nine stone four last Friday after training, you know. So I was I was on the weight for a week, but uh, you know, just me being me, I couldn't, couldn't help myself. I've messed up in the past, so no one's fault for my own. You know, um, I fought my way back. I've got another chance, and I'm going to take it. Has Gomez been presented with an extra little fillip on the eve of the fight here, Jim? I don't really think so. I think fighters who have a serious weight problem make the weight the first time because all their attention is focused on making the weight at all costs, not giving another fellow an edge. I think it's been a little blip. I think his test skills are maybe not quite right. Arthur, of course, aims to emulate the achievements of Jim and particularly Ken Buchanan, one of the best ever from Scotland. Edinburgh, born and reared like Alex himself, of course, and Ken's with us too tonight for our top of the bill for the British Super Featherweight title. That's coming live later, but we'll get the live action underway here at heavyweight. A new British hope, Matt Skelton, in one respect living up to a fine old tradition, of course. Very, very busy. His third outing in five weeks tonight. Ratko Draskovic, the experienced Serbian, is the opponent here, and he has extended plenty of bigger names already. For commentary here tonight, it'll be Glenn McCrory and Ian Dark, and our master of ceremonies is Michael Pass.
Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Meadowbank Stadium here in Edinburgh. Tonight, Frank Warren Sports Network, www.frankwarren.tv, the Edinburgh Evening News and Lonsdale London proudly present an evening of championship boxing. Welcome to viewers watching live and exclusively on Sky Sports. The officials have been appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. Doctors at ringside this evening are Duff, Greenhaw and Tansy. Let's commence eight three-minute rounds of boxing, an international heavyweight contest. Introducing to you firstly, fighting out of the red corner wearing the sky blue shorts trimmed with black. At the weight he scaled, 16 stones, 10 and a half pounds. He has an excellent record, 33 contests, 27 wins. 15 of those wins coming by way of knockout, only four defeats and two draws. Presenting from Serbia and Montenegro, Ratko Draskovic. And opposing him, boxing out of the blue corner, wearing these solid black shorts trimmed with gold. At the weigh-in, he scaled 17 stones, 12 pounds, and 6 ounces. He has a perfect undefeated record. Nine contests, nine wins. All nine of those wins coming by way of knockout. Coming to the ring as the current heavyweight champion of England from Bedford, the undefeated Matt Skelton. Timekeeper at the bell from Glasgow, Mr. Ricky Gilmore. And the referee for this event is Mr. Victor Lachlan from Paisley. Eight three-minute rounds. OK, you've had your instructions in the dressing room. Remember, obey my commands at all time. Defend yourselves at all time. Best of luck to both of you. God bless. Let's do it. Touch gloves. So Matt Skelton, who could have been big in Japan on the martial arts K1 circuit he was fighting in front of 60,000 crowds on that uh, circuit he says but he's elected for professional boxing Second instead he's in his seventh one. fight of the year he's won all nine fights by knockout so far been very very busy he was in action winning in a round a couple of weeks ago in Portsmouth in here with Ratko Dratkovic from Serbia, Montenegro, a 37-year-old who, interestingly, took Audley Harrison the distance. I know Skelton will want to stop him and prove a point and maybe drum up a bit of publicity for a meeting between him and Audley Harrison, or maybe Julius Francis, the former British champion who, of course, went in with Mike Tyson. There are some good fights out there, and they're not going to hang around with Skelton because he's at least... 35, we think, although the camp now claim to have a birth certificate saying he's 32. But he's looked big and powerful. Never been beyond six rounds so far. His best win over the former British champion Michael Holden a couple of fights back. Well, what's good, Ian, is the fact that he wants to be busy, as you said, his seventh fight of the year, this one, so that's really good for a heavyweight. You want to see a heavyweight being active, and the fact that he is 36 means he really has to put a move on. 17 stone 12, he's weighing for this one. Skelton, over a stone more than Dratkovic. He has a reputation for durability, never stopped so far in a pro career that goes back to 1990 he was the european junior champion back in 1984 it's been around a long time in this business one way and another he has been around and he'll know his boxing so could he expose skelton as just a pretender or will skelton really really look the, the business and try and force the stoppage You know about Skelton's record as well. One little question mark that we might have about Skelton is stamina. We don't know how well he would really last in a hard 10 rounder, say, or 12 rounder. Well, so far he's never given everybody the chance because he's only been past four rounds on one occasion. 
So his punch power is obviously very good. He's an interesting new addition to the ranks, that's for certain. Eugene Maloney, who's never short of a word or two, says that he has held his own in the past, sparring with Danny Williams. You do hear a lot of stories from Jim's. You have to take some of them with a bit of a pinch of salt. Kind of depends who you listen to about how those sessions went, doesn't it, sometimes? Welcome back to the Meadowbank Arena in Edinburgh, which was the scene of the Commonwealth Games boxing back in 1986. Kevin Sanders there in the corner, Eugene on the far side. Who actually got paid out, by the way, on a big bet last week on Injun Chi, even though they declared it a draw. Said he was withdrawing his account from the bookies unless they paid him, and apparently they did. A few thousand quid, I heard. Black trunks. Matt Skelton here, 9 and 0, remember? All inside schedule. How competitive can Draskovic get, I wonder, here? Well, he's trying to push his jab out in defence. Good right hand. Seemed to hurt him there. Chopping right hand from Skelton. Skelton looking strong, looking to push forward and get that right hand on. Just a long look at his corner there, Draskovic. He's quite an intimidating presence in there, no doubt about that, Skelton. They're trying to work on him in the gym, at not being quite so square on when he attacks. It's a legacy from the old martial arts days, but he's got Draskovic in a spot of bother there, covering up on those ropes, feeling the weight of some of these. Maybe that's why he was shooting glances at the corner. Yeah, it was a long lingering look. And he's got a, a mark under his left eye as well, Draskovic, just uh, showing that the power is starting to, to show on the face. Jabbing away quite well. He'd certainly make a point, wouldn't he, if he stopped this fellow, and Audley Harrison couldn't. They could make some capital out of it, that's for certain. Again, doubles up impressively on the jab, Scout. Well, because he throws that jab properly and he looks to get some weight behind it, 17, 12 and a half, you know, that has some effect. Busted up around the left eye already, Draskovic. I think this fellow's obviously pretty heavy-handed, this Matt Scout, who comes from Bedford. Well-spoken, well-educated guy out of the ring. But his camp say when he gets into it, an animal. And he's mauling Draskovic around a bit here. He keeps looking at the corner as if to say, what have you got me here? Yeah, well, I think he's realising this is a heavy job and he's not really up for it. Some big, chopping right hands from Skelton. The thing I like about Skelton, he just tried to get the job done. You, know, you can see his intent is there. He wants to, to get his opponent out of there. And funnily enough, he says he doesn't like hurting people, but knockouts do give him a buzz. He's getting plenty of them so far in his career, and he's really mauling and dominating Draskovic, who has to lean against the ropes to take cover. The bell's gone in the middle of all that. And he came at a good time for him, but he's in trouble here, Draskovic. Look at the eye as well. Had to take account. I think it's too much for him. How much more of this will he want? Give credit to Scout for putting him in this negative frame of mind and early. Well, it's been very forceful, hasn't it? You know, he's really went to make a point to take any confidence Draskovic had away, and he's managed to do that. He just... Sits, he was looking for the floor there, and the rope saved him, and he just perched, sitting on those ropes to take the count. But this was a good attack. He couldn't get the punches on cleanly, but he kept clubbing them to the body and around the side of the head. And, of course, oh, using the ropes for support like that counts as a knockdown. 
He's just like a, a big bear, the way he pours people around in there. This is the third round of this. It's a decent jab Skelton's got, isn't it? Well, that helps. You know, he's not just a big, strong man with a bit of power. He's got a bit of a jab, and, and that's good because he can set his attacks up. Is he going to become the first man ever to stop this fellow Draskovic? It's his 34th pro fight as well, the man from Serbia, Montenegro. Is he getting a bit long in the tooth now at 37? He misses with a right hand. That's just a slip, not down this time. No, he's counting it. Yeah, he's he counting did, it. He, he hit him with a couple of decent shots, Ian, and I think he was just all over the place and didn't really know where to right. go. Okay. That's two counts he's had to take already, then. Well, I don't think this is going to go that much longer. No, he surely won't. Skelton's doing a number, and he's stopped. It's over. He has become the first man to stop Ratko Draskovic. The man who went the distance with Audley Harrison, but Skelton has done a number on him in three. That was good. You couldn't argue about that. He never let Draskovic into the fight, and it was good, positive work. He really went there to dominate and get him out of there and hurt him, and he roughed him up pretty well, and you can see the damage on the, the eyes and the head. He doesn't know what, it, what he's been with. That look says a lot, doesn't it? It does. He's really, he's really had it all knocked out of him. And he's thinking, what on earth was that? He didn't stop. You know, he kept trying to get these heavy shots on. I mean, remember, too, that this fellow in his career uh, has lasted the distance with uh, Saleta and Sinan Samosan, guys who went on to become European champions. He has a record of going the distance with people. But I think we've got a little bit of extra evidence here that Skelton does have real power I mean I don't know what he'd be like in a long championship fight when he's upped in grade but he's certainly doing everything right at the moment he is you can't really see anything wrong and the stoppage here he just he just wants to get him out of there he just keeps throwing punches he's looking for the body he's looking for the head and I don't think Draskovic could have been any happier he wanted out of there then this was all too much as he gets steamrolled by Matt Skelton. Well, Eugene Maloney <laughs> is going to be very excited about him. I tell you what, I'm interested enough now to see him with any of the, the, the heavyweights in Britain. Definitely. I think you know, he deserves and I think he'll be looking for fights like that because he's not trying to avoid anybody. He's trying to get there as quick as he can. Matt Skelton's the name. Ladies and gentlemen, after 58 seconds of round number three, referee Victor Lachlan has stopped the contest. In his opinion, Ratko Draskovic was in no position to defend himself. He's now undefeated in 10 professional contests from Bedford, the undefeated Matt Skelton. And a generous round of applause, please. For Getting a good hand here in Edinburgh tonight. Getting a good hand here in Edinburgh tonight. Could not be a bigger contrast with Skelton's burgeoning career, new to the professional game, and the man who is top of the bill for the first time tonight on Saturday Fight Night. Alex Arthur was a truly stellar amateur. Maybe that's why even in Edinburgh, <laughs> when he was coming through, they hoped then that he could go on to be something special. They get their chance <laughs> to have it proven in front of them tonight. In our long-awaited top of the bill, Arthur making his British super featherweight title defence. It could be a cracker against Michael Gomez coming later. Well, how long before Matt Skelton features in a big title fight? Adam's going to put that and other questions to him now. A very excited team, Skelton. Let's start with you, Matt. Seventh of the year, ten now in all, all inside the distance. And you did to Draskovic what Audley Harrison couldn't do. You stopped him. Point proved? Uh, I didn't know you were going to mention Lord Lee Harrison. Um, I wasn't trying to prove a point. I was trying to... I was, Although I won my last time out, I was a bit disappointed. I rushed it a bit and obviously went away, done a bit more sparring. The team obviously advised me like this was a good fight for me. Um, that, that, there was no mention of like trying to stop him to prove a point. It was just a fight and obviously if it come, it would come. Um, no, I'm not trying to prove a point to Lee Harrison. Like I said, the team around me is excellent. And um, if they say I've got to fight whoever, 
you know, like I say, we discuss it and I feel, you know, I'm, I'm hopefully my game's improving and I'm up to it. Manager Eugene Maloney, you've been so excited about Matt. You also say there's a birth certificate proving he's not 36, he's 32. Have you got 34, it? 34. 34 he was 34. last month, yes. Have you got this certificate? I certainly have, but unfortunately oh. I've left it in my suit jacket in a hotel. <laughs> Well, I don't know if we worry about that, do we, Frank Warren? I think the thing is, he's winning the fights. Who would you like to match him with next? Maybe Julius Francis? So he fights like a 21-year-old. That's the main thing. At the moment, uh, yeah, Julius Francis won. The ideal match would be Audley Harrison, without a doubt. You know, Matt has had no amateur experience, and as you quite rightly said, he's done in his 10th fight that what Audley Harrison couldn't do in his 10th fight. Is there any way you can get Harrison, or is that a pipe dream? Well... I think as far as we're concerned, we'd love the fight, but you know Audley Harrison will not accept it. That's why he's gone off to America today. He's took the pressure off for himself. He said he's going to the States to sell himself and to, and to get involved in more bigger fights, which he hasn't done. The caliber of the opponents that he's fought are not all that. Why don't he come back here and fight for the English title? Let's see if he's the best heavyweight in England. I want to see him fight Matt Skelton for the English heavyweight title, and we'll pay good money, better money than the BBC player. Would you like that next, Matt? First up in the year, maybe? Yeah, like I said, um, I've been advised... Um, rightly so far. Um, like I said, I don't believe they're throwing me at the deep end. They want me to learn my trade. If the Audley Harrison fight comes along, I'm, I'm ready, yeah. That's no problem. We're all excited. Well done tonight, Matt. Thank you. Right, Barry, hold your horses here. Are you seeing the improvement that everybody else is? Yeah, fight I, to fight? I, that was a much more contemplative performance. He said he was thinking about his work more. And in fact, Jim and I were talking during the fight about how much more collective he was thinking his job he wasn't pressurizing so much he picked his punches he showed variety this guy's a throwback i like him he's an old-fashioned type of fighter 10 fights and over you know just a couple of years he's busy he's doing everything oddly harrison isn't doing and what's more he's looking good he's no spring chicken at 35 or 34 but uh, i thought he was very impressive today jim you know draskovic has been around do you get the idea that he felt the power and said well okay yeah also, i don't it, need to do this tonight also the Skelton. tactics were spot on I mean, Skelton used the jab to keep giving himself space to throw the punches. Yeah, Draskovic knows how to spoil. At this stage, the fight was over. I think he wanted out of there just at the end of the second round. But he gave himself room oh, to but work. what does that alone tell you? Well, it tells you that this young... Well, I'm going to say young man, 36, <laughs> but he's on his way. And Thanks the good news is they realise they don't have time to waste, and they're certainly not wasting time. The big improvements... In his last fight, he came out like a raging bull, just throwing punches all over the place. He was so much more controlled. He was looking for the shots. He was picking the shots. And this is definitely a step up in class as far as opponents concerned. And by far, this is the best performance well, I've seen from him. What we do know about this guy is that this guy is not a quitter, uh, Paul. Draskovic is not a quitter. He's a guy that doesn't give up. And he was bamboozled. He was hurt. He was punished throughout this fight. And you've got to hand it to this guy. He's getting better all the time. His variety's getting better. He's punching with venom. He's, his accuracy is good and he's getting a bit to me more, more of a complete fighter you often talk to us about the importance of good sparring is he getting his sparring week to week in fights like this is, well, fighting uh, every fortnight that's what it looks like well, the, the, the second best thing is to keep busy it's always difficult to get good sparring for a heavyweight if you've got a good lightweight you can let put them in with welterweights and so forth but good heavyweights always have a sparring problem but that didn't show up tonight his, his technique was spot on a great way to start the evening here in Edinburgh. Alex Arthur is the top of the bill against Michael Gomez later. But next week, another Scottish super featherweights in action. Craig Doherty defending his Commonwealth crown against Abdul Malik Jabir. Saturday fight night, next Saturday night from 8 on Sky Sports 1. But that by no means is all. In the early hours of next Sunday morning, Floyd Mayweather defends his WBC World Lightweight crown against Philip Endow. It promises to be another thriller. It starts Sunday, 2 a.m. next week on Sky Sports 1. But if you cannot be with us for all of it, it is repeated on Sunday starting at 8 in the morning. Yet another night of the best in boxing from Sky Sports. One of the finest pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world today. Pretty boy, Floyd May! The world's best champion. Is a moment. Please welcome Philip the Time Bomb Endo! Mayweather is nothing. He's got nothing for me. I'm the man to take him out. Mayweather will be on home territory in Grand Rapids, Michigan for that one. Alex Arthur, as we've stated already tonight here in Edinburgh, very much on home territory in our top of the bill. But Michael Gomez is not friendless here, I can tell you. And one of his closest friends in boxing, 
has made the trip up here tonight. It's Ricky Hatton, sombrero and all. Now, that's not the contract for this big fight against Ben Taki in December that he's signing, but he's got a great reception here tonight. Hatton, this week, if you missed it, announced to meet Ben Taki in what will be the biggest fight of his career so far in early December. All that to come. Also in action here tonight, welterweight prospect from Scotland and a little buzz in the area about this young man too. He's only 20 years of age. Gary Young is the name. Five straight wins before this one against Peter Dunn. Here's round one. Second out, round one. Exciting 20-year-old Gary Young fighting in his home city of Edinburgh for the first time here. And he's sold a lot of tickets, some 800 on his own for this fight. He's in with the stocky, rugged Peter Dunn, the 28-year-old from Pontefract in Yorkshire, who's been very busy lately. This is his fourth fight in six weeks, coming back after a year's break. But Young's looked a bit of a puncher so far. And he's building a bit of a reputation as one of the better prospects around. 5-0 and so far, three inside schedule, boxing above weight, really, tonight. He's a light welterweight, really. This is welter, because Dunn came in at 10 stone, 10 pounds. But looking very well toned and muscled, Gary Young. Well, he'll enjoy this boxing at home in Edinburgh, the youngster. But as long as he's not too fired up and doesn't try and press too much, got to just try and go about his business yeah, in a very thoughtful way and do what he does best. His mum and dad never wanted him to box when he was just a little boy. Well, they know he's in love with the business. They're here tonight. They're supporting his career. Indeed, his dad, Rab, runs the Gilmerton Amateur Boxing Club in Edinburgh and used to box a little bit himself in the unpaid ranks. Sit right to the body there from Dunn, who's... 1-1 one, one and lost two on his comeback so far. Just another step along the way, this for Young, or it ought to be anyway. You never know with these things. Well, he's proud and he's game done. And a great nickname and desperate. <laughs> oh, lovely left hand with a hook there from Young. Good shot. And then the left to the body as well. Good right over the top as well. Looking a bit of a natural, Gary Young. You could see he would have a bit of star quality up here north of the border if they can bring him through. And again, he throws an impressive looking left hook to the body. Just some of the noise around this arena. The place has come alive with his arrival in the ring here tonight. Well, he's only 20 years of age, so there's plenty of time for him. One or two of these punches, he's winding up a little bit too much. Just needs to relax. But he's bound to be tense in there with so many fans. Good crisp shot, so that right through the middle as well. He's pretty accurate with them as well. They've been putting him in with heavier opponents in the hope that they can give him a few rounds after one or two early knockouts of his career he's won that opening round and there were some good shots in there looked good in that opening Second round as you said he was loading up a little two. but uh, understandable charged up by the support he's getting here tonight in the blue and yellow trunks gary young Dunn, who's been a pro since 1997 in those red and black trunks here tonight. Managed and trained by Michael Marsden in Yorkshire. This is his 35th fight. He's only won nine, though. Well, it is designed... No, no knockdown. It is designed to bring Young along and you know, try and give him a, a few rounds and just help him to learn the business more. British boxing needs all the stars it can get. And the hope is always there with any prospect that they'll turn out to have that vital bit of star quality and charisma in the ring.
Oh, that's a tremendous left hook. It almost lifted Jan up off his feet for a moment there. It did. It certainly put a bit more space between the, the boots and the canvas. It was a good left hook. He timed that one really well. He lost 17 of 98 as an amateur. Young, so he tells me, and he won seven national titles on the Gaelic Games, a couple of years running. in the World Junior Championships as well. But he's a tough old bird, Peter Dunn, isn't he? Yes, he is, and I think that's why they've the probably picked him as an opponent. We just saw Young can learn a bit more. There's one win since he came back, by the way. Dunn is over the veteran Wayne Shepherd. Listen to the crowd roar as he wings away with those hooks. Young. Bit of blood around the face of Peter Dunn. throws that jab and everything he throws seems to be with a bit of snap and authority about it yeah, he's got a bit of rhythm you know he rolls the shoulders and puts the shots through and that's winning another round for Gary Young fourth round Red and black stripes, Peter Dunn. It's worth remembering that Young is really fighting a weight above his natural weight here tonight. And that might just have the effect that his uh, punches just don't have quite the same tough effect that they would do if he was fighting against a light welter. That's true. He also telegraphs a few of them in the way he winds them up, where often you, know, you, you really hurt your opponent more if they're of a surprise. He says that in his... Uh, amateur days he actually had the world junior champion guy from Lithuania on the floor but then got beaten on points which he didn't dispute but there obviously is a bit of a whack there I think with him yeah I think he's strong I think you know he could land a, a good shot at any time just maybe just shows them a bit too much and he's addressed them up and you know, just get a bit more flair in his style just not quite so snappy and clean with his punches in this phase of the fight, Young. That's a good punch, though, the right hand. Chopping right hand. And Peter Dunn, of course, is the kind of fighter that promoters love. And come along and give the really good, honest effort, and the game would, of course, not survive without the likes of him. They also serve. A jab of Young is a good one, nice and solid. And he gets into range to throw it as well. And it's a, a ramrod punch with a bit of power of its own by the look of it spiriting punch to take. He's not just pitter-pattering away with it, tapping. He means it. Looks like he could turn the jab into a, a hook late on with that the kind of way he throws it. Yeah, well, I think that's what he's looking for, isn't he? He's looking to turn that jab into a hook. 
Ennis could well have as well. These are heavy shots. Dunn takes him well and throws back again. It was a good left hook. Now, this is good action here between these two. Final round coming up then here. And this has been a, another good display by Gary Young, who continues to make a good impression. Well, he's won it all on my card so far, 50-45, and looked good doing it. Yeah, it's not been difficult to score this. I think that would be everybody's card here. You see, quite often, we're all told in this business about these hot young prospects and how good they're going to be and what they're going to do and how they're going to take the business by storm but we're, we're quite often disappointed so you don't want to rush to judgment too soon and you have to bear in mind the level at which young is fighting at at the moment not been put up with anybody that you'd call remotely dangerous or threatening at this stage all he can do is win these kind of fights and make a good impression doing it he's certainly doing that for me tonight yes he is but he does need more fights and we do have to remember the level that he's at Tougher questions will follow, of course. The trick is, from the people handling him, the manager Frank Maloney, notably, when to pose those questions. I mean, if we're looking to be critical, he still gets hit a bit, and I think he can work on that defence more. Being the type of fighter that he is, he's going to be close to his opponent, yeah. so he needs to be a little more elusive. And fighters who fight in range a lot like that, and Hatton's a classic example, are going to get hit, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. It almost goes with the style. I think Roberto Duran got hit a fair bit too, didn't he? He wasn't bad. Dunn coming on a bit strong, but still very, very tough. He's covered himself with pride tonight, Peter Dunn. Oh, the man that hit Ken Buchanan a few times. Sorry, hit, hit Duran a few times. Ken Buchanan, he's here in, in the audience. Great, great Scottish fighter. Well, he's spat out a bit of defiance in this last round, as Peter Dunn. He wants that phone to ring in a few more days. He doesn't want to get stopped. Four fights in six weeks, that's going. When you've been out for a year, isn't it? He wants to make up his mind up, doesn't he? Does he want to be in this business or not? I think for the moment, the answer is definitely yes. He's showing it here. He's got himself in pretty good nick, I think, here to get through this. There goes the final bout. Good fight, that. And Gary Young has won it. Gets a huge reception from his home fans. And he can enjoy that moment as well. And I hope that there are many more power nights like this to come. 6 and 0 for him now. Taking the distance there, though. Predictably, I think, by Peter Dunn. But he threw a lot of eye catching punches in that fight. Yeah, he did. I don't think the man's going to be too disappointed with going the distance. I think, quite the contrary, they'll enjoy him getting a few rounds and time to learn because he won't do it just blasting everybody out in two minutes. Exactly, and you get overconfidence, and you, you, know, you need to learn, and that's what he's doing. 360 punches landed, or thrown, I should say, by uh, Gary Young, and a decent economy rate as well. He did, he did well tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds of boxing, referee Al Hutchin has scored the contest for Dunn. 54 points for Young, 60 points. He's now undefeated in six professional contests from this magnificent city of Edinburgh, Gary Young. You're going to hear more about him. Six and, and a great performance. And lots from of Peter fans Dunn. here in Edinburgh. Definitely a rising talent. Early days yet, but uh, keep your eye out for 20-year-old Gary Young. Jimmy got a great reception here tonight. What was your impression? Yeah, well, I think he deserved a great reception. Yeah, he boxed well tonight. He's only a kid. He's only had half a dozen fights. 
There's a few things that has to work on. He has tremendous natural power, but I think he depends on it a little bit too much. So he, he shows the punches before they come. He telegraphs them a little bit. Good fighters won't put up with that. He'll be punished for that. So he's going to have to relax a little bit, settle down, think about accuracy more than power, but not plenty there to work with. That was impressive. How will they do those things, Jim Speaks? Yeah, well, it's basically, he's got to do it. That's just learning to relax, and the experience will bring that to him. Good quality sparring. But uh, he, I agree with uh, Jim, I think he's got great potential, naturally strong, can bang a bit, and got a, well, more than anything else, he's got a huge selling power. People love him. They'll love our top of the bill tonight, certainly. Gomez against Arthur for the British Super Featherweight title. The whole country's been waiting for this, as Craig Slater reminds us. At loggerheads for months, Alex Arthur and Michael Gomez's Battle of Britain clash should make Edinburgh rock. I'm here to fight, I'll put my head to his head, and I'm letting him know, listen Alex, I'm here to fight, I ain't here to lose. That'll work to my advantage, you know, the more fired up, the more aggressive and royalty is, it's better for me. Sitting pretty as British champion, Knockout, amazing Alex Arthur. A win tonight hands Arthur a Lonsdale belt for keeps. I think I'm going to stop him, I don't know when, but this fight will not go the distance. I'm not a stupid fighter, you know. I'm going to go out there and do what it takes to win the fight, not to please people. But with new mentor Freddie Roach stuck in America, preparation hasn't been ideal. Do you think the relationship can work under these circumstances? Um, probably not. The, the, the thing that would work out best if I get out is to come and train in America for a while. We've trained for eight really hard weeks, you know, we had a great spell in the States and stuff like that, so there's, there's no problems, no. In his dark days, Gomez was his own worst enemy. It's easier to get a taxi to a nightclub than to the gym because I was stupid. But he's preaching ring redemption under Billy Graham. I'm in the condition of my life. It was my last chance. I'm grabbing it. I'm grabbing it tightly. His skill is really underestimated, Michael Gomez. He's smart. He knows how to read a fight. Um, I just think that. I just think he's the better man. A peak Gomez was certainly a handful and recent displays suggest he is back on track. Can Gomez finish it off here? He's always in the right place. My hands are going to be in the right place on his chin. Arthur needed three attempts to make the weight, while Gomez sailed through first time. But in this battle of pressure and precision, the real tests come tonight. Do not leave that TV, because anything can happen. Michael Gomez has trained hard for eight weeks. I've trained hard since I was 10 years old, and I'm not going to let someone take it away from me who's a part-timer. No chance. Barry, at various times you have joined in the rave reviews for Alex Arthur, but what about his last performance in a defence of the British title in the summer against Willie Lemon? Well, against Patrick uh, Malingi, he was very impressive, punched hard, changed his style, and against Willie Lemon, he'd done what he had to do. It was an opponent he couldn't look absolutely brilliant against. Lemon was a very talented guy. Many people felt that Lemon would be too much for him. It could be uh, outpoint him. There were bets all over the place, apparently. But he boxed very well. He dissected him and took him apart. I thought he was very impressive. Was there anything that Michael Gomez would have looked at in this performance, Barry? I thought, I can exploit that. Yes, well, of course, because he changes his tactics according to his opponent. Against, yeah, against, uh, against uh, Lemon, he was maybe a little upright at times, and a uh, there were times when he could be caught with left hooks and right hands. But against Malinga, who was a harder puncher, he tucked up and was very circumspect and used his jab and boxed ahead of him before he threw his punches with great venom and power. He's a, he's a very talented all round. I think he's adaptable. I think he's got too much for Gomez, but it'll be a good test. He's the best of Arthur Barry from the outside, though. Yeah, he will box with tonight. I would imagine he'll be boxed tonight up behind his left jab. He'll be careful early on. He knows Gomez will go for it, and uh, he will start putting the pressure on, basically, and start throwing his punches and taking them apart as the fight progresses. Different style facing him tonight in Michael Gomez, that's for certain. He suffered a shock loss against Laszlo Bognar. His career was taking off at that point, but Jim, he elected to go straight back in with the same opponent. Yeah, that's a good sign, but unfortunately, I don't think he, he really had his show back on the road. You can see he ended up on the floor again, still doing the silly things. The snap wasn't in the punches because the condition wasn't there. He's changed trainers from that point, and I'm not saying he's moved with a better trainer, that would be unfair, but I think he needed a change at that stage of his career. Billy Graham has really got him back on track, really got him serious again, and he's a far better fighter because of the change. And I think Alex Arthur is going to see Gomez at his best tonight. He guts it out in this fight, but he did lose again against Kevin Lear since then. It would be an incredible comeback from all of that if he were to upset Arthur here tonight, wouldn't it? 
think he's about to give Arthur a tremendous battle. I don't think he's good enough to beat Arthur. I think Arthur has tremendous class. He's much more adaptable than Michael Gomez. You know what Michael Gomez is going to do because he do does the same thing in every fight. Alex Arthur's got loads of different things he can do. I think it's going to be a real battle, especially for the first six rounds, but I fancy Arthur to take over from that point. Barry, how do you say it for us? I see it. Uh, he's got to be very careful early on, Arthur. I think that he'll be dangerous, Gomez. He might even put him on the seat of his pants, but it'll be an experience that he can get up. He'll take him apart late on. I believe it'll be a mid to late round stoppage for Arthur, but it will be a good fight. Arthur, however amazing, is still the apprentice. Let's hear from the master in this city, Ken Buchanan. What a crackling atmosphere. You can hardly hear yourself think now yeah. here. Ken Buchanan, boxing back in Edinburgh after, what, 15 years? You must be delighted. Um, uh, brilliantly, you know, but I mean, I only wish I'd, I was 15 years younger and I could turn the clock back, like, you know. Fantastic, like, you know, but I will admit, I had these crowds behind me when I fought in Madison Square Gardens and all over the world. You've become very, very close to Alex Arthur. He's developed so well over his 16 professional fights so far. And you saw him backstage earlier. What advice ahead of this one? Well, I, just as I say, he's looking in great condition. Um, that we may miss up at the, the way in he was a wee bit daft. But um, it was all right, he's brand new and he's, he's looking forward to this, he's right up for it. And uh, I think he'll uh, I think he'll surprise a few people tonight. Do you think this is the first big test against Michael Gomez, who looks in fabulous shape? Oh, he does, he is in good nick, like, you know. But he's got to be, isn't he? He's, he's playing a good man, so he knows he knows himself he's up against a top opponent this evening. And uh, against Alec, like, you know, and he's got he's still in good condition. Do you think Arthur will stop him and be most impressive? I think myself, I think myself personally, six or seven rounds, I like old stop -off. I can't remember a crowd like this, Paul. Unbelievable. Buchanan and Watt are all fired up, I can tell you. And all the greats of Scotland's past, from Lynch onwards, must be looking down on this. This is special here tonight. The only problem is, Arthur is yet to get into this ring and get to work. A new young champion. Allegedly, a man on the way up. A former champion, Gomez, allegedly on the way down. But who could be sure in a fight atmosphere like this? It's next. Big week of cup football coming up on Sky Sports. The Carling Cup. Live action from the third round. Tuesday, live from Midland Road. It's Leeds United against Manchester United. And on Wednesday, don't miss, Blackburn against Liverpool. Both matches live from 7, Tuesday and Wednesday on Sky Sports 2. This is Edinburgh, and this is what they've been missing. And to think that all along, men like the great Buchanan and Bobby Neal, an Edinburgh fighter from the 60s who won the British featherweight title, even he didn't get this sort of hometown acclaim. Neither of those two ever fought in their hometown. Now we know why Alex Arthur was so keen to appear in front of his own people here tonight. It is the big test. Michael Gomez, the former British super featherweight champion, not a man to be intimidated easily. Well, if it's as good as the build-up, we're in for an absolute classic. Just a reminder that you can access the Sky Active menu at any time simply by pressing the red button on your remote. All is set then for our top of the bill here. Let's join Michael Pass, our MC. Ladies and gentlemen, ready to enter the arena now. The challenger from Manchester, Michael Gomez. Well, you can talk about fights of the year. I think what we've got here already is the atmosphere of the year. There are 3,000 people, a sellout in here, and about 40 of them are supporting Michael Gomez, who's going to know he's a long way from Manchester tonight. It's a furnace he's walking into. It really is. This is a, an unbelievable atmosphere, and it's all against Michael Gomez. But I don't think that'll put him off. He's the sort of character who's tough, determined, and I think, if anything, he'll enjoy being the underdog. He'll feel he has something to prove. This is a guy with a degree from the University of Life. 
who came from children's homes to make something of himself in boxing. A lot of scrapes out of the ring as well. British champion Lonsdale Bell. Then it all went wrong. Can he put it all back together again tonight? Well, he's got a few fans here, brave fans too, wearing the traditional sombreros of the Gomez supporters. And Ricky Hatton has got one of those hats on too. He is in the Gomez corner as a stablemate of his. There he is, Ricky, in the background. And Arthur about to make his entrance. And they'll take the roof off when they see him, I think. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the champion from this nation's capital, Edinburgh, amazing Alex Arthur. Blimey, Glenn, what's it going to be like when he fights for the world championship if he ever does? Well, isn't it great? It's wonderful. I think the area deserves to have a big name like Arthur here and haven't they responded haven't they come out really as fantastic support absolute bedlam in here tonight we could be at Hampton Park itself it's that kind of atmosphere with a Scotland playing England and of course it is an Anglo-Scottish confrontation they know it ringing around the arena and of course Alex Arthur is Edinburgh's golden child Commonwealth Games gold and Gomez is trying to intimidate him as he gets in the ring I don't think he's going to watch with this guy he's pretty icy he is pretty icy pretty cool he's got so much confidence in his own ability and he's got a cool head this could be a bit special for the British Super Featherweight Championship, but uh, it's rocking, if you can hear. Gomez is a year older at 26. Reach advantage for Alex Arthur. And both of them on the ninth stone four limit, though Arthur needed three attempts. He was six ounces over originally. Gomez has been a pro for longer, like Arthur. He's been a British champion. He's got a Lonsdale belt to keep at home. Arthur, though, 87% knockout ratio. He's got a real dig with the left hand to the body, particularly. Wins the Lonsdale belt outright tonight to keep Arthur if he wins this fight. Big incentive. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Meadowbank Stadium here in the city of Edinburgh. Tonight, Frank Warren Sports Network, www.frankwarren.tv, the Edinburgh Evening News and Lonsdale, London, proudly presents 12 three-minute rounds of boxing for the Super Featherweight Championship of Great Britain. Welcome to viewers watching this broadcast live and exclusively on Sky Sports. The officials have been appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control, shooting charge Mr. Bernard Connolly. And so, people of Edinburgh live from the Meadowbank Stadium, this is the big one! <laughs> Introducing to you firstly, fighting out the white tangerine and green colored shorts at the weigh-in yesterday he scaled on the championship limit nine stone four pounds exactly he has an outstanding record 33 contests 28 wins 18 of those wins coming by way of knockout with only five defeats presenting the challenger this evening and the former super featherweight champion of great britain from manchester michael gomez and opposing him boxing out of the blue corner wearing the white colored shorts trimmed with gold and red 
at the weigh-in yesterday, he also scaled on the championship limit, nine stones, four pounds exactly. He's an undefeated boxer, 16 contests, 16 wins, 14 of those wins going by way of knockout tonight, making the third defense of his championship, presenting the super featherweight champion of Great Britain from Edinburgh. So star referee, Mr. John Coyle from Wolverhampton. 12 rounds. OK, guys, I ask you three things. Obey the rules, obey my instructions, and let's see good sportsmanship. Shake hands. Shake hands, guys. Good luck. Good ref for a good fight. John Coyle, it might be his last British Championship fight. This is 65 and will be retiring at the end of the year. So good luck to him as well tonight. He's been a splendid official over the years. The man from Wolverhampton. Michael Gomez on the night that the clocks go back an hour will hope that they can go back for three years to the days when he was ripping men apart as the British champion himself. But it's Arthur who has the crown at the moment in the white trunks. You know what you're going to get from Gomez and he gets it with a left hook early and he seems to have an effect and Arthur's shaken up by a right hand as well. It's a bad start for Alex Arthur. Those punches have hurt him. This is his biggest test, all right, and Gomez has made a great start, ripping home shots in the opening 20, 30 seconds of the fight. What a start, Glenn. Unbelievable start. Tremendous left hook from Michael Gomez, and he caught Arthur Flush, and the legs went wooden there. And a bad start for him. He's got to get through this, standing very tall, and that chin is in the air. He is a bit upright as well at times. Arthur and can be vulnerable to getting hit with left hooks. Gomez so intense, there is a burning ferocity and concentration about him. There has been all the way through the build up, and everyone around him says he has never ever been in shape like this. But Arthur picks up his rhythm at last after that cold start. Well, Arthur has to get that jab working, he's trying to do that now, just to keep Gomez off balance and get the rhythm for the rest of his punches. Arthur's star potential against Gomez is battle-hardened qualities. Arthur seems to have recovered from a rocky opening half minute. And he's starting to do some of his better work, he says he's had an icy self belief about him all week, but again, his head is knocked back by a Gomez left hook. Gomez wants this badly. He believes his whole career is on the line here. He's right as well. They're good jabs from Gomez. He's looking strong and a lot into those punches. And he's getting close enough to land them too. Arthur having to keep things on the outside, some good shots from him, but back comes Gomez again, who's been there and done it at this kind of level. But is Arthur something a bit above this level? Is he potential world-class? He rounds home some great-looking headshots of his own with the left hooks. Good comeback from Arthur in the round. But this is better. Now he's starting to get that rhythm, starting to fire off the combinations and look the, the classy fighter he is. Needs to use that height and reach. His reach is as big as heavyweight legends Joe Frazier and Rocky Marciano. Needs to use it, but Gomez again. Guessing close, you can't hear the bell. They haven't heard the bell. And frankly, neither did I, but it was a great opening round. British boxing fans being spoilt at the moment. Brody Chi last week was a wonderful fight, whatever the controversy. And now this, and Arthur in trouble in the opening seconds. Yep, twice, two times the legs went there as he was caught by good shots. Obviously a bit cold, but that was significant for Gomez. And maybe a little bit worrying as far as the future's concerned with Alex Arthur too, but that's to be discussed later. Round two here. Arthur has obviously been told by the corner, 
just soften him up with that jab, use some lateral movement, use the height and reach. This is more what Arthur needs to do. He's got a three inch height and reach advantage over Gomez, who should be made to work really if he wants to get in close and maybe pay too. He's going to need to roll and bob and weave and find a way in past that jab. Now, this is more what Arthur should have been doing from the start, you'd have thought. Great start for the second round, this by Arthur. Sharp as a needle. The jab working so well. Very, very sharp and very accurate. But he's got to take some of the intensity out of Gomez. Lovely right hand, too. He's got a good repertoire, and he can adapt and think in there. Gomez wants to wrap him up with the hooks on the inside. Gomez, whose real name is Armstrong, he's got that written on the back of his trunks, you'll see. Changed his name to Gomez after the Puerto Rican ring legend Wilfredo Gomez. This is great stuff from Arthur. Combination punching off the jab, and he smiles at somebody at ringside. I think it was Barry McGuigan. They will have approved of that. He's had advice, I know, down the years from Barry and Ken Buchanan as well, the great world lightweight champion from Edinburgh, who's here tonight, of course. This is textbook stuff here from Arthur in round two. Well, Gomez has to get past that jab. He's got to close the distance and he's got to start letting the shots go much quicker than he is. Switch south for a moment then as well, Arthur. Echoes here of some great Edinburgh fight nights of the past, when it used to be the boxing capital of Scotland. The great Ted Kid Lewis fought in this city. This is where Gomez can be rough and can knock Arthur out of his style. Gomez looking to prove tonight that he's not a faded fighter, a light of former years. He has had three wins since his damaging loss to Kevin Lear, when, frankly, that night he did look a busted plus. Clean it up. A little warning to both fighters, really. Well, this is where he's working very, very well, and this is how he needed to come back after that shaky first, Arthur, with some beautiful boxing. That's a wonderful round of boxing by Alex Arthur. You won't see much better than that. We've just witnessed a masterclass in jabbing in round two from Alex Arthur. Look at that. He's landed 32 of them already to Gomez's four. Yep, great boxing, reminiscent of Ken Buchanan. And that nice jab, perfect poise. And that won him the round comfortably. Arthur, who said in the build-up to me last night, the only thing that's worrying me about this fight is that I'm not worried. I should be nervous, but I'm not. Well, he made everybody just about to a man nervous in the audience in that first... Yeah, they certainly went quiet, didn't they? Fast, sharp combination punching from Arthur. Gomez has to get past that jab again. But he knows that he can shake up Arthur. He did it with almost his first punch of the fight. Well, I think there is that vulnerability about Arthur. Certainly can leave his chin open, and that always makes it interesting. That left hook to the body is a trademark shot of Alex Arthur. Only two men have ever lasted the distance with him, and nobody's beaten him yet. But he's going to have to really work in this one. Gomez has got a cut as well. Gomez has got a cut by the right eye, I think it is. We'll have another look. Well, Arthur elects to stand and trade with Gomez. Not sure that's the, the wisest idea. But Turbo he's been charged in. excitement. A back of the bumper cuts left hook. dramatic fight it's pretty incredible this so far and Gomez is coming on strong 
and Arthur is going through a crisis. A big crisis, Ian. He's been hurt by every left hook. And this, I'm afraid, puts big question marks about his punch resistance because he's woozy and he's damaged as well and he needs the bell to end this round. Ian, big question marks about this fight. Can he get through? And there's nearly a minute of the fight in this round still to go and Arthur, I think, is in danger of getting stopped here. Has to start throwing back and amazingly he does. He's still to me. Dears on his feet, he's not quite there. He's not. And look at his eyes. His eyes are staring out in a weird kind of way. From instinct, he comes back. Something has to give or go here. It might be Arthur on the night he tops the bill in his home city for the first time. Gomez is getting a monstrous left hook. Two of them, his legs have gone. Arthur's legs have gone. And there are 10 seconds left in the round. Ian, a lot of fighters oh. would have been stopped here. A lot of fighters, the referee would have pulled them out. And he's cut as well. And he's getting beaten up by Gomez now. Gomez wants this so bad. It's a massive round. And Gomez hit him, I think, after the bell too. But who can hear it amid this mayhem? He's got him. Arthur is all over the place. I'm not sure he can ever come back from that. Will a minute be long again enough? Ian, he's the champion. But I think... <laughs> In so many cases, that fight would have been stopped. He was out on his feet, and I haven't seen many people take as much in a round. But I think at the very moment the ref would have dived in, he somehow found another couple of punches, just about to keep himself in business by the very ends of his fingernails. Well, for me, he could have been pulled out. He was desperate, desperate trouble. And you just hope, will a minute be long enough for him to recover because Gomez has got the key Arthur cannot get out of the way of that left hook we've seen that in the past as well and marked it down as a little weakness vulnerability against left hook and you have to wonder too remember Freddie Roach his trainer has not been here at all in the build up to this fight he's kind of been trained almost by telephone the strategy was designed by Roach but he hasn't been here it's had to be carried out by his old amateur trainer Terry McCormick and he's hurt again here away goes Gomez again and Arthur has to stop these left hooks landing otherwise he is going to be beaten and humiliated in front of his home support Gomez is all over him it's a superb display this from Gomez, who's rolling back the years a little. How is Arthur getting through this? Oh, back he comes with a big left hook, and Gomez wants to hold on. Well, what a terrific fight, Ian. Unbelievable action here. Something has got to give. Arthur turns it around a bit for the moment, but he must improve his defence. He must get that right glove up more, otherwise he's going to catch every left hook and surely must be stopped. But, but, he's asking questions of Gomez again now. But Arthur's defence is non-existent. He's all over the place. It leaks too much. More left hooks go in. And he's paying a very, very heavy price. He should be stopped, I think, at this point. I really do feel the referee needs to jump in. He's taken far too many. His left eye's busted up as well. Arthur. There's a bit of damage by the right eye of Gomez too, but it's not as serious. And he looks stronger and fresher, and he's been through these kind of battles before. Nothing quite as intense as this, I don't think. I think we got the fight of the year again for the second week running. Gomez is getting the better of it in close. Arthur's trying, but that's where his weakness is. His chin is right there hanging out. And Gomez's punch resistance looks better, doesn't it? It does. It certainly does. Arthur knows that he's got the same control on the jab. He just gets pulled into a fight. Arthur's landed some ripping punches of his own here, but Gomez has taken those, whereas Arthur looks shaken up by just about everything. He still punches back, though. It is absolutely titanic, gargantuan action, this. Gomez was hurt a little bit there. Looked to grab 
as Arthur came off the ropes with some decent shots. It's spellbinding. This is pure, undiluted boxing drama, and Arthur takes another one. His legs turns to wood again, and yet somehow he stays on his feet. Don't ask me how. I can't begin to explain it. What a fight this is. Good gracious me. But Gomez was shook up a bit as well in that round. He needs, you know, I'm not, no disrespect to Terry McCormick, but he needs Freddie Roach in there now, doesn't he? Yeah, he's moved up to that level, he needs more, but, you know, he's had Terry McCormick for most of his career, and, you know, he's excited us, but... But he isn't the main trainer of Alex Arthur, Freddie Roach is now. Well, he, so they keep telling well, us. So they tell us, but he's not really. The person that's in the ring, has been in the ring, for most of his career, is in the ring tonight. So, you know, he's doing the same thing he always would but he's just getting caught. We've seen oh, that vulnerability. Yeah, yeah. We've seen how he's open. Gomez is intense enough a fighter to show that, to show the gaps, to show the moves. But it's not a straight uh, secret, is it, that Gomez was going to throw left hooks in the build-up to the fight you'd have thought they might have worked on that. That's what he does. Fifth round. Tell me about amazing Alex Arthur. It's an amazing fight, this. Gomez cannot miss him with left hooks. But Arthur is showing incredible heart. Let's make that clear. Incredible bravery and heart to but battle his way through the fog. But getting hit with a worrying amount of punches. His head rocked back by jabs. His defense is absolutely non-existent, but give a lot of credit to Gomez, who keeps on firing in the right shots. Can Arthur somehow turn it around? It's not impossible. That is not impossible. And he's hurting with a body shot here. Gomez wants to hold on, and it's Arthur's turn to tee off. Gomez just looks like he's biding his time. As soon as he comes out of that, that with his arms down, he'll be able to throw shots again. No head movement whatsoever from Arthur. He is a sitting target. Gomez looks very, very tight as he winces there, as he goes back to face Arthur. He's been hurt by body punches. Gomez might be dispirited that he's had Arthur rocking and reeling for so long, hit him with everything, but hasn't put him down yet. You can't help yourself thinking here. Again, the legs of Arthur looked very, very dodgy then. He was almost limping for a moment there, and hopping. Well, it's all going to be down to durability and fitness, this, because they're both taking a lot of shots. Arthur coming back, success with the body punches. If Arthur wins this fight, it would be one of the most astonishing victories we have ever witnessed, I would say, in the British ring. Ian, it's not amazing, it's a miracle if he wins this. But he might, you know, because Gomez has shown one or two signs of wilting, but back he comes again. The cut is worse by Arthur's left eye. Oh, and this time he does go down from the left hook. It had to happen sooner or later. He's got up quickly and talks to somebody at ringside. He got up too quickly, I think. Too should quickly. Have, should have waited for eight. And he talked to the camera. Surely now, Gomez will do it. Yeah, he's down again. He's down again. And he gets up too quickly again. And he doesn't know where he is. I wonder whether John Paul has stopped it. No, he lets Arthur get the benefit of the doubt. No, he stopped it this time. And Michael Gomez has the victory after a truly amazing fight. What a win for Michael Gomez. And Alex Arthur paid a very, very heavy price there for having a non-existent defence. I hope he's all right, down three times in the round. The medics are checking him. He got up too quickly each time. His cry was incredible. That's one of the greatest fights we've ever seen in Britain, yeah. you and I, Glenn. Terrific fight, I must say. 
with the sovereignty. I was quite second. I think it should have been stopped after the second knockdown. He should not have took their punches with no defense. Alex Arthur could have been seriously hurt, and I'm absolutely sickened by what went on in the ring after a great fight. What an incredible window for Michael Gomez away from home as well against the man who was being built up as the big golden hope of the future, the possible world champion of the future, getting all the treatment from Frank Warren's organisation. And Gomez has come back from some periods in his career when, frankly, we all thought he was shot, and he's won this fight. He's proved in life that he's a survivor and that he can come through adversity. And he's done it again. And there really was a sense of will and destiny that prevailed and proved that Michael Gomez could be champion again. And it was a, a fantastic fight. Well, I think those of us who were privileged enough to be here at ringside are never, ever going to forget that one. No, certainly not. The bravery of Alex Arthur, uh, his natural instinct to get up and fight. But I think that's a point where you need protected yourself. Somebody needs to protect you from yourself. There's his girlfriend, Debbie. He's got a little uh, son who's nearly two as well, Alex Jr. They're just checking he's all right. Worrying moments, of course, for everybody. Some oxygen treatment. Yet it did look as if it went on a bit long. I think referee John Coyle was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt in front of his home fans, but really that should not be an issue, should it, Glenn? No, definitely not. Anybody that gets hit as much as he was getting hit here. There's the, the knockdown. Good left hook. The legs have gone, Ian. It's, he'd been hit with better shots than that, but the legs had gone. Then the bravado of looking to the camera and then going over to the camera. That was inexperience, oh, wasn't it, too? He'd was never been there before, had he? Ridiculous to do that sort of thing. You, know, you ha should have been thinking, what do I do? What do I do? How do I get through this? But his senses were scrambled by this time. They'd been scrambled for a long time. All the way through. There's the second. Again, the legs give way. Just sheer weakness. He just couldn't keep on his feet. Good left hooks. And the warning signs were there for Alex Arthur in the opening 15 seconds of the fight definitely as soon as he got and he should not have been for me allowed to go there straight away shouldn't that should never have happened and i really i thought that was that was wrong yes he was given too much of the benefit of the doubt i think to be honest i think john coyle certainly couldn't be accused of not giving him every chance there might be a bit of debate about that but it's over in round five and it's like the old clint eastwood line in all the confusion i kind of forgotten <laughs> when it ended it wasn't the fifth after that john cole the man at the center of the drama in what could be as i was saying his last british championship fight we must hope that alex arthur is okay after that what a triumph too for billy graham ricky hatton's trainer as well of course he left brian hughes didn't he uh, and Brian had done a great job with him for a long time too. He had. I mean, be fair. Your Brian brought him up and brought him a good way, and then maybe it was time for a change. But certainly Brian did did him proud. Frank Warren looks pretty stunned about it, and all Alex Arthur's hopes of glory at the moment lie in tatters. He's been given the big build up. The atmosphere was just well incredible here tonight. Arthur looks okay again, but how does he come back from that? Because I'm afraid that fight left massive question marks about his punch resistance and defense. Yeah, back to the drawing board and needs to you know, seriously look at his, his, his whole career and definitely his defense. But what bravery he showed. Amazing, amazing bravery from Alex Arthur tonight. But Gomez has triumphed and it's the greatest win of his career. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes and 58 seconds of round number five, referee John Coyle has dispensed with a count. Your winner by way of technical count out, he is the new super featherweight champion of Great Britain from Manchester, Michael Gomez. And a round of applause please for a superb ex-champion who I'm sure will come back from this defeat, Alex Arthur. Stuart in charge from the British Boxing Board Control, Mr. Bernard Connolly, will now present the Lonsdale belt to the winner and the new champion, Michael Gomez.
Gomez, British super featherweight champion for the second time. Occasionally, you do see things in this game, Barry, that leave you almost speechless. Yeah. Was that one of the greatest that, fights you have ever seen? That was a fabulous fight. At any fight. level? Yeah, that was a fabulous, fabulous fight. Not for Alex Arthur, unfortunately. He, uh, his defense was leaky. We talked about the weakness in his defense. I thought he had made adjustments. He told me we had heard about it so many times. And well, Barry, uh, Gomez, can I stop you for one second yes. here? This young man Gomez is incredible. Gomez absolutely. is totally incredible. Don't oh, let's absolutely. talk now no, no, no. about the mistakes no. Alex Arthur made. And Gomez was fantastic. Absolutely. And I apologise for all through his career that I haven't given him the full credit he deserves. No, He'll get it from now on. That was out of this world. Absolutely fantastic, brilliant. Michael Gomez. He didn't allow me to Sorry, say Barry. that, Jim. Sorry, Barry. Uh, <laughs> he didn't allow me to say that. What a brilliant fight. Gomez came back. From, this is a guy who's fought all his career. I talked about it this morning in the paper. He's come through adversity all his life. A marvellous, marvellous turnaround for his career. It's his triumph. Let's hear from him. Michael Gomez, you came back from the brink, really, in life. You've come to the lion's den, and you've told us what we really didn't believe was going to happen. How did you do that? I'll tell you how I did it, with a team effort. Look at Billy and Ricky Hyde, Bobby Rimmock, Kenny Kays, all of us stuck together. We went back to basics with Billy. We've got a new dietitian, I've worked out from scratch, I had to give up my life. I've moved away from my family and my kids to do this. You know, full respect to Alex, he's a brave kid, he'll come again. Because you hurt me, I'll, hey, you hurt me. You hurt me a few times, but I dug deep, like I told you all I would do, and I'll come back. And I'm back again, back where I was two years ago. Lee, Kevin Lee is the man I want. Come find the real Michael Gomez, the real man. I think we back. saw the real Michael Gomez in there tonight. You had him going in the first round, and he couldn't get out of the way of your left hook. Was that the answer? You know, I went left hook happy. That was a terrible, terrible performance, really. No, no disrespect. I mean, skill-wise, it was all heart again. I need to start controlling it. You know, I want to go on to the world stage. I've shown I've got the heart, you know. Lee, come fight a real man, that's all I'm saying. In such a sizzling battle, was it your heart and your conditioning and your desire that got you through this? Yeah, man, I had to dig deep for this, you know. Billy telling me everything back in the corner. You know, like I said, it was a team effort. We all done it, man. Um, I had to dig deep when he hit me with a body shot, he was left up to the head, but I had to dig deep, and I did do. Times I was hurt when you don't see, I think you've seen the body shot, but I dug deep and I come through it, you know, and left hook in the first round. I think, I don't say I broke it, but I don't, I'm not a doctor, but I've hurt my left hand in the first round. But I kept going through it, and that's it, that's how I got through it, man. Let's move to trainer Billy Graham. You love the role as the underdog. How did you get him in that, Nick, um, for the performance of his life? And I told everybody who'd listen what was, what was going to happen, and I've taken that away from Alex, believe you me. I knew this, I knew this was going to be a war, and I think Alex is a great fighter. He'll definitely come again. But um, I just knew Michael's getting better all the time, and this time next year he will be a better fighter. I just knew he could do it, and I had faith in him, and uh, I just, this is what boxing's about. And... Michael Gomez, all, all of your boxing career was on this night. You've come through it in words, your feeling. You know, it was, like I say, a team effort. I'm back. Are the European champion next or Kevin Lay? And thanks to Tom Jones as well. Thanks for a fabulous fight and night. Thank you, Sky. <laughs> no, Adam, it was even better than that. He never lost that title belt in the ring. And he's going back to Manchester with it. And he's going to leave us with some of the greatest memories. It's been our privilege to bring you on Sky Sports. More from Barry and Jim when we come back. Scottish boxing has another hope next week. Craig Doherty defends his Commonwealth Super Featherweight title against Abdul Malik Jabir on Saturday fight night. Next Saturday night from 8 on Sky Sports 1, just the start of another wonderful weekend of boxing. Later, from Grand Rapids, Michigan, the WBC World Lightweight champion Floyd Mayweather makes his defense against Philip Endow. It looks like being a tough one for Mayweather. You can see it with us live on Sky Sports 1 from Sunday morning next week at 2 a.m. and it is repeated later that morning, Sunday morning next week at 8 a.m. Well, to call it an upset here tonight, it's just not right, but they did come you to hail Alex end. Arthur, That's but to a man, Edinburgh has instead up. saluted you Michael know, Gomez right, after his sensational right, performance here tonight. Barry, we interrupted you. Please continue. <laughs> well, what a fight. What can you say? It was all there. You don't need to say anything. What a fantastic fight. And, uh, you know, Gomez just, he turned his career around tonight and he's got a chance again. But we all thought, we all thought Alex was going to do it. And he got caught in that first round and he never recovered. He got, came out and boxed well in the second and threw it away in the third. And at the end of the third, Jim said, to, and I said to Jim, 
if he gets if he gets through this he'll be a fabulous fighter the but it's very the third round you don't yeah. get through that you, 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 don't, you don't take that and recover at the end he of the almost did a couple of times but I don't know if it's because I felt personally involved, but that's the most exciting fight I've ever sat yeah. ringside in my life. It was wonderful. Is that that, yep, that yep. good? It was that good. It was well, that good. You, when you're a I don't know because, you have to remain I, I don't know if it's because I was watching a Scotsman and, and I felt involved in it, but that, I've never been so excited Absolutely in my fantastic. whole life. More dispassionately, you know, along the way and the rise of Alex Arthur until tonight, you have raised questions about his style, Jim, and but how he depends. was adapt. Yes, yeah. and how he was adapting when he was going in against better and better men in professional class. Yeah. Ali has a couple of problems, a bad problem with his defence, his head is far too high and when he takes a punch there's a macho part of his personality, he's too quick to try and get back his opponent, sometimes you have to take a punch, cover up, you know, just survive, but he never does that, he always wants to come back. And Barry, I think it's well known that Michael Gomez has idolised you, yeah. and it was shades of the old McGuigan, the best of Gomez, and yeah. he seemed made for Arthur Style tonight. I have to tell you, uh, his performance tonight was fantastic, what he done was he showed that he was a true professional. He, it, the fight went his way from the start, but he made it go his way. He went straight in, and what he done was he used that upper body movement, and Alex just could not put the jab on him, and every time he came back on the right-hand side, he came back with his left hook. Slipped to the right, came back with Do his left Do you go with hook. Jim that round three is one of the greatest well, single rounds we have ever seen? I tell you what, I don't think we have a better round on Sky Television, Sky, Sky Boxing. In all our time, we've come and covered the years 10, 14 years. I don't think we'll ever see a round like this. It was fantastic. How Alex Arthur stayed on this. We were was finding things out about him. Yeah. I know Jim is right in saying yeah. that you know the legs had gone completely. Absolutely. But we were finding out. He wasn't well, throwing it what, in. He was not. I have to. I have to tell you this. I mean, he showed so much intestinal fortitude, so much gut, so much determination. He took some of the best punches I've seen a fighter take and, as a super fella. And, and Unbelievable. The trouble by this stage, he'd taken so many shots. His balance was gone. His yeah, legs were not right. Box. When your balance is not right, your own punches do not have the power. So he could not discourage Michael Gomez at this time. Yeah. Michael Gomez was on fire at this stage. Arthur didn't have the balance to generate the power in his punches to keep him off. And from that point on, but the courage that Alex Arthur showed, was he took too many punches for yeah, a young kid absolutely. at the start of his I career. Agree. He took far too many punches, but it wasn't a fight that your corner could pull you out or that a referee could stop because he was always in well, the I fight. Well, I think the referee could have stopped. I think the referee could have stopped it one knockdown beforehand. He took too many I shots I think he was very alert at the last knock. However, I think, he was, he was I th very I think alert. his performance overall was absolutely fantastic. I mean, the, the fact that he couldn't box and he couldn't get his... He just took the fight away from him. Gomez Jim, was fabulous. Long, long term... Will this be considered a very bad thing for Arthur to have endured this fifth round? Uh, it's a harder fight than you want for a young kid at this stage of his career. Definitely far harder, but he's fresh, he's young, he's naturally confident. There's a few things, there are a few major things that has to change. There are things in his personality he has to change. He came up off the floor and smiled at the camera. He's sometimes too busy being a showman and he forgets how serious a business this is. He was saying before the fight, the only thing that's worrying me, I'm not worried. Well, he's worried now, yeah. but he didn't even worry properly. He should have been up surviving the rounds, clutching, just trying to survive, but that macho bit in him causes him to make more mistakes than he should be making. The macho, the macho thing came, actually, the second round was his best round. He fell back into the trap. He came, the macho slipped back into him in the third round. He started swapping punches with him. He backed up to the ropes, and he allowed Gomez to take his fight take the fight to him and fight the way he wanted to fight and he never recovered from that that's the point by the time the third round had finished he was unable to I mean that was a phenomenal knockdown at the end there and I thought that was unnecessary he could have been saved a knockdown before however the fact was he wasn't able to get his boxing together after that third round I didn't think he'd last another 30 seconds you know coming into this fight Jim we charted the ups and downs and mainly the downs for Michael Gomez recently so how has he turned it all around here? Well, I've already made my apology to Michael because I definitely have not given him the credit. I did not think Michael could produce a performance like that. I said he changed trainers at a time in his life when he needed change. I said he didn't maybe possibly, I'm not saying he changed a better trainer, but he needed a big change in his, li in his life at that time, and it's worked. look how it's worked. These fellas think it's one of the greatest they've ever seen. What about Ken Buchanan? Well, Ken Buchanan, amazing Alex Arthur, beaten in an amazing fight. Your take on it all? Absolutely brilliant. A fantastic fight, <clears throat> especially for Edinburgh, like, you know. But um, Alec, unfortunately, I was just wondering maybe that last couple of pounds to come off, you know, when he was a few ounces over the weight of the day. I wonder if that had anything to do with it, if he's maybe killed his head to do the weight that last, you know, last couple of pounds. He got off to a terrible start. Do you think that was the beginning of the end? I mean, he got his boxing back together, but he never seemed to be getting out of the way of Gomez's punches. Yeah, he was. I, he was mixing it too early with him. Like, you know, I would have liked to have seen him maybe later on in the fight. And eventually, I mean, near the end of that fight, he caught Gomez with some good body shots. Like, you know, and, and Gomez was really hurt. You know, if only Alex had 
eased up a wee bit in the first couple of rounds and boxed him and moved, boxed him and moved. You know, like we told him and we, Corner was telling him, like, you know, box him, move, box him, move. keep him out of the road, tire him out, and then work on his body. But the way things that work, so it doesn't always go that way when you go into a boxing ring, the way that you want it to go, like, you know. But um, Gomez uh, really is, is a strong, strong laddie, like, you know. Crackling night for Edinburgh. Can Arthur come back from that? Oh, definitely. He will come back from it. I Thanks very much, you. Ken. Thank you. We hear that Alex Arthur has been taken to hospital, although they are also telling us it is only precautionary, and anybody who witnessed what we've seen would not be surprised about that. It's a very, very hard business, but here's a young man taking his first step, a Scottish light middleweight, Barry Lee, just 21 years of age, his professional debut tonight against David Wakefield. Everyone. Professional debut here for Barry Lee, wearing the uh, white trunks comes from Arbroath and in with David Wakefield from Tooting in the Union Jack trucks. It's in the light middleweight division. It's only won one out of five so far has Wakefield. So they're hoping, I would think, the people behind Barry Lee that uh, he can get off to a winning start here. White trunks, remember, for Lee. Good little right hand to the body from him early on as well. Bound to be a few nerves for him. You can only wish him the best of luck. And he got him with a good right hand there and seemed to shake up Wakefield, who's woozy here already, and goes down after a cluster of punches, but no, not down, says trialist referee Kenny Pringle. But he was certainly shaken up, Glenn. He was shaken up by a good shot, and Lee looks pretty strong with some good hooks as he comes forward, and Wakefield has to get that chin down a little bit and start rolling out the way of shots. Real good confident start, this, by Lee. With a right hand over the top from him, catching Wakefield around the temple. Wakefield just a novice pro himself. He did have a points win over John Hilton in his second fight. Two heavy shots again coming in from Lee. The big right hand and a straight left. And he's pretty open, Wakefield, and taking some pretty heavy shots. Pretty upright as well. Needs to get those gloves up. And then the body attack as well. Compact Lee, and he couldn't really have had a better start here because every punch he's landing seems to be hurting and disorientating Wakefield at the moment. Yes, he looks as if he tries to put an awful lot into all his shots, Lee, and they look pretty solid blows. Wakefield's a big guy, needs to snap out that jab a little bit. The token tool, of course, of every pro fighter would serve him well. He's the lanky type, but he's caught on another right hand and looks disorganized in defense. He'll have to tighten up a good deal. Pretty solid jab from Lee. Just 21 and trying the paid business for the first time. That's better from Wakefield. At last, he pokes out that left jab. Well, and the right hand as well. That's more like it. He has got to try and wake up and just start doing it a bit more just to make Lee think about it because he's really just had it all his own way in this opening round. Much better from Wakefield. He had a terrible opening 90 seconds. He gets him with a nice little right uppercut as well. Just starting to get a foothold in things here and giving Lee something to think about on his debut, but definitely Lee's opening round. Well, in that first round, Wakefield was on the floor, but it wasn't counted as a knockdown. There's a solid right, really did get a lot into that punch and a few more, and he, he gets his hands up, but then just is kind of pulled forward. He had been hurt, but I don't think he was going down, he was just sort of almost pulled forward. But that right hand, that lander, was a really good, solid punch. And to be honest, Wakefield did awfully well to stand up to that. And he got the benefit of the doubt from the uh, referee, Kenny Pringle, there, did Wakefield. But they were good shots from Lee, who had an excellent opening couple of minutes in the round. Yeah, some good right hands. Bonus, really seconds. nice punches. Rocked the head of Wakefield seconds around over. quite a lot. Round two. Second round, remember Barry Lee's in the uh, white trunks. 
from Arbroath, whose previous sporting claim to fame was a 36-0 win over Bonacord, which I do believe is a British record in football. Not too many boxers that I can think of. Maybe this guy can change things a bit. Wakefield, by the way, is from Tooting. He's 24, three years older. Once he started using that jab towards the end of the first round, things looked a little better for him. Well, somehow he's got to try and make Lee think Lee will be nervous, and this is his first pro fight, but Wakefield made it very easy from early on. And he's got to start throwing punches himself, try and push Lee onto the back foot and just do something. This one, the first scheduled fight on the card tonight, which is probably good news for Lee, not having to sit around in the dressing room all night getting nervous and worrying about it. Just doing a bit less in this second round, Lee. It's getting in a game with right hands around the temple area. Well, he started the, the fight at the beginning of the first round throwing good body shots, and I think that just brought the hands down of Wakefield. The hands have very rightly gone right up around the chin after getting caught with some good shots, but I think Lee needs to just change it up a little bit, go back downstairs and, and mix the punches up. Wakefield is just finding his way into the fight a little here, moving more freely. He's not really poking out that jab with very much authority, but at least he is trying to do it. He drew last time out with William Webster at the Porchester Hall in London. But you wouldn't call it an electrifying start to his pro career, would you? Just the one win in the first five. Maybe he fancies he can do something here with the uh, guy being given his introduction. Well, he's certainly getting a bit more confidence. He's now got Lee on the back foot and he's fancying the job now, Wakefield. So it has turned around considerably you couldn't see this in the first half minute could you no you couldn't really see Wakefield being in the fight at this stage after taking those heavy punches but he is and he's now starting to take the fight to Lee well I was wondering if he was going to be in it by the end of the first round frankly in the first 30 seconds but give him credit sucked up a bit of punishment and now he's starting to come back Well, I think he might have even done a bit more in this round, Wakefield. Second out, fourth and last row. Last round coming up. Lee's landed more punches, as you can see. Final round, Barry Lee. Can he make it a winning start in the white trunks here? Needs to stay busy in this final round. Both of them just might sense that the decision could be stolen not much time to make your point really in a, a four-rounder is there just 12 minutes that's right now we've got 29 28 in Lee's favor but you know that's close and they, they'll both know that and makes it you know pretty nerve-wracking when you think you've got to try and you know leave it to the last round and do more by the way, this uh, trialist referee, Kenny Pringle, won't be scoring the fight. It's being done by a more experienced official at ringside. That's just to make sure he doesn't have too much to think about in there early on as he's learning his trade. Nice right on the counter there from Lee. But he's trying to swarm forward Wakefield here, take the uh, official's eye by just throwing lots of leather don't think he throws his punches quite as cleanly. A bit messy, isn't it? It is messy. He's just pushing too much, Wakefield. He needs to give himself a, a bit of room to land his punches. Well, good left hook on the inside there, and he wants to hold on, does Lee? That was a good punch from Wakefield. That one did land clean. Quality shot that time. But there's a lot of flailing and a lot of missing. Well, he's just punch using economy. He walked onto a right hand that time, Wakefield, though, as he tried to close the range and almost jump on Lee on those ropes. Yeah, he's just using his strength, isn't he? He's just trying to walk forward and doing it too much and just leaning 
on Lee. He needs to give himself a bit of room to get these punches off. Both tired now. I saw him kind of gulp for air just now, Lee. Hard, hard work, this professional business. If he didn't know it before, he'll be knowing it now. He's trying really hard, Wakefield. Just got to make some of the, the shots connect better. It's a little bit ragged, his work. He's missing an awful lot. And it's up to Victor Lachlan, who is the uh, official scoring this at ringside, by the way, to decide who gets this. Another left hook on the inside there from Wakefield. Well, you can't take it away for Wakefield. He's really trying hard in this last round, trying to get something out of it. Right hand and then a body shot from Lee. Oh, and he gets it with a right cross and floors Wakefield, and that probably settles the argument. Now, that is a good shot. That was the biggest quality that he's produced so far. Barry Lee, and down goes David Wakefield in the last session. Very good shot, a whipping right cross. It is over. There might be a little bit of a delay. No, nope, there's not going to be a delay. Lee's got it. He cemented it in that final round, if there was to be any doubt about it. They work very hard, the pair of them, these novice pros, in that last round, trying to get the win, and Lee has got that and has started with a victory. Relief. Yeah, he did what he had to do. He got the, the little spears in. He was the more accurate of the, the two fighters. And Wakefield was trying hard with crowding his work, and eventually it was Lee who found the spears and put in a lovely right cross. Just step to the side, give himself that little bit of an angle, and then drove home a, a good solid punch. And that was finishing everything up and making sure he uh, secured a good win. There's a little turn and a big right hand. Hard-working effort from David Wakefield, who gave that everything that he could. Needs to just use his jab more because he's tall and improve on his punch economy. But Lee, well done, off to a winning start. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing, referee Victor Lachlan scoring for Kenny Pringle has scored the contest for Wakefield at 37 points, for Lee, 40 points, your winner, on his professional debut from our bro, Barry Lee. And a good performance also from David Wakefield, ladies and gentlemen. And good luck to young Lee as he starts out on the road here tonight. Michael Gomez told us that our top of the bill would be memorable and how right he was. It's the night of his life, fitter than ever, better than ever, and British super featherweight champion for the second time. It was designed to be Alex Arthur's triumphal homecoming here in Edinburgh, but instead he ends the night on his way to the Western Infirmary here. We should stress that it is only precautionary for observation and no doubt for quite a few stitches as well. Just uh, some reflections to come on that, of course, on ringside this coming Thursday. Join us Thursday evening at 9 on Sky Sports 3. So much to look back on. And to look forward to, next week, Craig Doherty, Abdul Malik, Jabir gets us underway. That's for the Commonwealth Super Featherweight Crown. Saturday fight night at 8 on Sky Sports 1. And from 2 in the morning on Sunday next week, Floyd Mayweather tops the bill defending his WBC World Lightweight crown against Philip Endow. That's next Sunday, 2 a.m. on Sky Sports 1, and it will be repeated on Sunday later from 8 a.m. One closing thought, gentlemen, about the unbelievable fight we've seen here tonight. We have actually asked the British Boxing Board of Control for permission to speak to referee John Coyle about the decision to allow it to go into the fifth round. Mm -hmm. That, sadly, permission has been denied us. But just give us a closing thought, Barry, on on whether it should have been allowed to go that far. I thought the second knockdown in the fifth round, he should not, he should not have been, uh, he should not have, an, have an endured the third knockdown. It was a very sickening blow. He banged his head off the canvas. And I understand that if they had stopped it early, possibly the crowd would have kicked up the fuss. But the kid was out on his feet, and it's the, it's the referee's responsibility to protect the fighter. Jim, very, very briefly, will Arthur come back? Yes, I think he will. I think he has the personality to go over this. He's a good kid, tough kid mentally, but he'll need to be. Thank you both. Amazing Alex Arthur has been in something amazing here tonight. But most amazing of all, Michael Gomez is back.